Okay, so let's look at the while statement. Now, the while statement is essentially like a an if that never goes away, keeps repeating so long as that condition is true. So I guess when you use it, you have to use it with a condition that can change. If that condition is not going to change somewhere inside that while, then you probably shouldn't be using a while loop. Notice while loop, while statement, interchangeable terms. So have some care about the condition that you put inside those while loops. Now, there's another little, and it's almost, you know, like a trivia factoid. While loops can have an else statement because while is a control statement. There's always going to be an else, like the other branch of it. However, in the case of while, it really, whether you include it or not, is not going to change how the code runs. Because basically, if I put this code indented back there to happen after the while condition, well, that's pretty much exactly going to run the same way. So just like the if, the while is going to run everything that's indented all the way, however many lines you indent. And when that's done, it'll move on to the next line or it'll move on to the else statement if you have the else statement. Perhaps the this is more readable code over in practice. I don't really see too many people using it. So here's an example of the while statement. So you have two integers, current and end. So while current is less equals to end. So that's even true when the current is 10 and the end is 10 because of that equals sign. So you print current and then you increase it by one. So you print one, you increase that by one. So you print two, print three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It'll print numbers one through 10 and then it'll print you have reached the end. All right, let's get a more practical look into the while statements. So. In here, we're going to recreate that last program that you've seen with, and we're going to play a little bit with the iteration and with the condition as well, just to see how it works practically. So we had two variables at the start. We had current and that was one. We had end and that was 10. And we had a while loop while current is less equals to end. While current is less equals to end then we printed the current and we iterated it. Current plus equals to one. And after that, we had an else statement. And that was just something like that. Print, you have reached the end. So let's run this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You've reached the end. So Let's have a look at messing around with, with some of these. So you could have made that a negative number. Could have been, that could have been negative 10. And then it would have been counting forwards. You don't have to iterate by one. You could have iterated by two. So that would just one, three, five, seven, nine. But you don't have to iterate by plus. You could times these. So one, and then you times that by two is two, times that by two is four times that by two is eight. You might even make it like compound interest like. So let's say, you know, 10 or I don't know, 6% interest. And let's see how many iterations we'll need till we get 10. There you go. That's kind of like a interest operation inside. You notice how it always says you've reached the end. Check this out. If I just indent that back, it'll be identical. So again, you don't have to use those else statements. Personally, I've never used them, but I can see how they make the code a little bit more readable. All right, that's all for this program. So in this program, we're going to use the if statement and the while statement, or otherwise known as the while loop, together. And we're going to use them to do something fairly interesting. We're going to factorize any integer that the user enters. So we need to start by getting the user input and saving that as an integer. So we can just say print, would be nice, please enter a number. Now, I could have basically saved that num initially, but I'm just going to do it over two lines. So num equals to int input. Now, this is going to basically take the user input and then save that as num. So 
from this point on, I think I'll use a couple of comments because there's an algorithm going on and I'm going to use a variable that I'm going to call candidate. And I'll start with candidate at one. So the main explanation is, first of all, candidate will change in the while loop. And candidate is a potential factor. So we have some number that we're going to iterate. It's called candidate. It's going to go up by one, one, two, three, four. Now, all of these are going to be tested whether or not they are factors of num. So now for the while loop. So while candidate, we're going to iterate it from one all the way up to the num, less equals to num. While it's less equals to num, we can test one condition basically. If num percentage candidate double equals to zero. Now, what is this testing? I'd like a, I'm going to comment on this. Basically, it says if num divided by candidate returns no remainder or has no remainder. So num divided by this percentage sign, that's what it does. So it's num divided by candidate, the remainder of that division. So that is zero. So let's say you have 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. There's no remainder. 10 divided by 3 is 3.3 .3 with the remainder. So it would be 3 with the remainder 1. So if you've got no remainder, that basically means that you got a factor. Because 10 divided by 2 has got no remainder. 2 is a factor. So you can basically print candidate, comma, is a factor in factor of none. So I think that's that's quite self-evident. So after you've done this, after you've checked if it's a factor, if it's not a factor, then nothing happens. So here you can basically iterate the candidate. Candidate plus equals plus equals one. So this should really do it. So let's run it and enter a number. All right. 15. One is a factor of 15. One is a factor of everything. Three is a, three. Five is a factor, 15 is a factor. So these are factors of 15. Now, if we had done list functions, the easiest thing to do would be to have like a list here and then you're appending all the factors and then basically a list of factors for any number. But this here, the there could be a couple of ideas for improvement. Um, so like if the user enters negative numbers, those will also have factors, but maybe you can do a comment, like an if statement here, commenting, oh, dear user, you're entering negative numbers. Are you sure this is not a typo? And if a user enters a string, well, you could do an if statement here, basically saying, we're not going to run the program. So that's a bit of error handling. Just thought I'd share some ideas on how you can play with this code yourself. Let's get back to the lesson. So now that you've done these programs that use if statements, while statements, or while loops, even combine them together. I just want to quickly recap a couple of facts. So the if statement runs only once, if that condition is true. If statement will run once, and we'll continue with the normal program flow. The while statement will execute whatever is indented after it, so long as that condition is true. And it'll happen again and again. So if you have a while followed by a condition that won't change because you don't have anything in the while loop that can change that condition, you're going to be stuck in a forever loop. So in fact, while true is a forever loop in Python. And also when you hear while loop instead of while statement, these refer to exactly the same thing. So when it comes to the while, in fact, most people would say while loop rather than a while statement, despite, you know, technically while being a um, flow control statement. All right, let's move on to the for loops.